Hey, welcome to our show, our K-pop book club show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So each month, at the start of the month, we're going to read a book that has been recommended by a K-pop idol. Uh, so the first book book <laughs> is Almond. Is Almond by Won Pyeong Sung. Mm. And, and the recommendation came from Oram and Sugar of BTS uh, because we spotted them reading it in BTS in the soup. So we were curious and decided why not? Let's read it. Let's read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this book is about a young boy named Yoon Jae mm. and he has a condition called alexithymia, which means he has a smaller amygdala and that me- the amygdala is where we process emotions like you know joy, happiness, well same thing, uh, <laughs> sadness, fear, fear. Mm-hmm. So um, he's you know unable to feel those emotions, and um, you actually think it seems to be kind of like reminiscent of yeah it Curious reminds incident. me of the curious incident of the dog at night time mm. just in the way it's written and obviously both have male teenage main characters and it's written from a first person perspective um but the way it's written and the kind of the viewpoint the characters have of the world um they're very matter of fact logical yeah, very direct. um yeah it, it, it did really remind me of the curious incident of the dog at night time mm. At certain points, it also reminds me of Spock, too. Like, the very, like, you know, devoid of emotion sort of um, approach to communication. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a coming-of-age story. And we get to see Yoon Jae grow as a person and, you know, connect with uh, his peers. Yeah. So, yeah, at this point, we're going to be jumping into spoilers. So, if you haven't read the book, read the book Report. and come Report. back. <laughs> or if you just want to hear his talk. Yeah, you can stick around. It's up to yeah. you. It's in your hands at this point. We warned you. Yeah. So yeah, let's dive into kind yeah. of themes and characters. Yeah. So I think the biggest uh, thing that jumped out at me when I was reading is that even though this is a character that technically isn't supposed to be feeling emotions, this is a book that is just... The foundation of the book is about empathy. Mm. It's rooted in it. It's about no, like understanding how others are feeling. And in a way, what jumped out at me is that even though this character is supposedly not able to feel um, in terms of like just immediately, the logical like motion of trying to understand other people uh, exercises that mo- like emotion. It shows that empathy is not something that is innate to people. It's something that is learned. Right? Yeah. Like you don't just, you're not born um, being able to understand someone else. You have to, you have to learn. Yeah, you have to really just um, go through the motions and then realize that, oh, you know, people do these things because of X and yeah. Y and Z. Yeah. I mean, the, the character, in his, especially in his formative years, his mom spends a lot of time drilling him on mm. if somebody does X, you do Y. If someone says this, you say this. Um, <laughs> but one of the interesting things about it is at the start, he just learns, you know, to say thank you or smile or whatever it is, is mm. the normal social response. But as he gets older, uh, his interactions become more complex. And mm. it, it turns out that there's just more exceptions the rules and even when (laughs) like he goes home and he asks his mom has to almost she has to take time to think it through and come back to him with a response so even though and sometimes she just doesn't know she doesn't know so (laughs) she's just like oh here's your default yeah just do this so it's interesting just to see that even the people who like from instinctively navigate this world when there's when they're asked to kind of slow down and logically say why they react yeah. a certain way or what the right way to act is it turns out that the social norms are embedded in society um, yeah. and it's kind of a learned thing yeah. rel- how to navigate it rather than just something that comes innately yeah and it just shows how much of our society is uh, made up by humans like it's illogical like sometimes like mm. um I think it's really interesting how the characters, the ones who, you know, have empathy um, are some of the characters that can't understand each other the most. Like, (laughs) it almost seems like if you understand other people can have emotions, you're, you put up barriers 
from under truly understanding each other right mm-hmm. like it seems like people and, and communication is the key because like with Yunjie. Yeah, he'll just straight up ask. Yeah. So he gets the answer. Yeah. And people know <laughs> because he's the person without emotions or he has, like, he's a bit strange, they'll just answer his question. Yeah, they so communicate straight. <laughs> whereas they don't, yeah, so, but with the, if they were interacting with someone else, they would have that kind of, yeah, oh, I can't be too direct. And yeah. Double means don't want to be rude or whatever it is. Whereas <laughs> when they're interacting with yeah. him, they don't have that concern and they'll just, and they don't, they don't feel that when they're mm. when he's talking to them either. So that they like yeah. they let go of the social norms in order yeah. to communicate and interact with them. And it means in a weird way, Yunje gets the most like clarity of what's <laughs> going on in terms but, yeah. of emotions from the other characters. Yeah. Right? All the adults just like pour their feelings out to him. Yeah. Whereas like humans in general are just really we complicate things. Yeah. We're, we're concerned <laughs> we concerned like to do with that. our emotions. Right. Um, so yeah, that's that really jumped out at me. Yeah. So and then it's interesting to um, because when he is kind of in his mid teens, mm. there's a life altering event where a murderer, like basically someone on the street, mm. attacks and kills multiple people, and two of those people are his grandmother who's killed outright, mm. and his mother who's stabbed, and then is in a coma. In a coma. Uh, Yunjae sees it all, but he's trapped within a restaurant. So even though I don't think he felt very inclined to go out and well, the granny was holding the door. The, yeah, he yeah. he wanted to go out, but it's unclear what action he would have taken. Yeah. Um, but it, the interesting thing is for me was that when this happened, obviously it blew up in the media, but very quickly it became less about the six victims oh, yeah. and more about. What motivated the killer and all these terrible societal things that happened mm. to the killer and how like society the, failed the him. The fried chicken shop. Oh yeah, <laughs> he had a fried chicken shop, which kind of tied in with Parasite. Yeah. The movie. Um, if you've seen it, maybe you'll remember that the family had originally had a chicken shop which had gone under, and apparently it's a very common thing yeah. for retirees in Korea to invest into a little shop or into a, a restaurant, and especially chicken restaurants. And often they go under because, well, one, the, the saturation in the market, mm. but two, like, you know, not everyone's going to succeed. Yeah. So apparently it's quite a common story in Korea that, that, about it. <laughs> that um, <laughs> people will go bankrupt or in debt yeah. over these little restaurants they open. So it was interesting. And he was living in a semi-basement uh, apartment too, which is also in Paris. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And common in So Korea. it was interesting being able to see, like pick up on those things and be like oh we know the cultural context Mm. for that or we've read like obviously we don't know the full nuance but we've read things that tie into other other um mediums we've seen but what i thought was interesting about the whole thing was how they humanize the killer and it reminded Mm. me a lot of about how like when people go on shooting sprees in america and stuff Mm. like especially um if the person who's doing it happens to be like a white person mm. then it's very quickly like what's the backstory of this yeah. person or what led them to this path um they're very humanized whereas the, the victims, the victims almost get like ignored and yeah. it's like the grieving of the family it's it's yeah I'm seeing it in writing like that and someone who doesn't have emotion tied to it but is part of that narrative as in yun jay he was there he saw it as his family that died yeah and he's there kind of like what's the logic of like this like it's all about the killer now yeah. like why why does no one care about the victims anymore yeah. and it was just interesting and i don't think he was saying like you shouldn't humanize yeah, he had, but he had no it, opinion either yeah. way because of the nature of his character but the fact that it was one-sided one-sided yeah. it was yeah kind of and I think, yeah, like you said, in America, it often feels one-sided, too. Mm. Like, the victims are faceless. And then it's like, you know, the shooter is... Their yeah, we, faces society is... is yeah. Like, yeah, and I mean, there's merit to those arguments and those questions. But, the, yeah, people... The, the media is quick to sensationalize and mm. humanize the killer versus um, yeah. doing justice towards the, the actual victims, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, it was interesting seeing that in a Korean context. Um, mm with a western lens yeah Yeah. and in terms of the social commentary i think a lot of it has to do with hope Mm. and a society devoid of hope where its citizens feel like their life has no meaning it's like coming up to a dead end you know there's nothing else they can do um and this ties into gone 
this is, I think, Gon's story here, where and Gon is uh, Yoon Jae's friend that he befriended. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> friend of your friends. <laughs> yeah. And Gon is someone who just has no luck in life. No, he's had a pretty miserable life. Yeah. yeah. He was lost as a kid by his parents. Um, he went through the foster care system. And he fell in with some, like, gangs, gangs and, uh, and just then, generally. Yeah, and then upon being reunited with his, his like, his birth parents, his mother is dying mm, and he's yeah. not permitted to see her and yeah. his father is struggling to bond with him yeah. both because the idyllic version of their son that they had is gone but also Seems he's rough. coping yeah. with the loss of his wife as well yeah mm. so and so this is where gone enters the story mm. where um his father sees yun jae in the hospital while yun jae is visiting his mother who's in a coma and he thinks, you know what, Yoon Jae seems like a candidate to present to the mother as, you know, the lost son. And he does that. And <laughs> because, <laughs> of course, again, Yoon Jae being, being the interesting character he is, mm-hmm. most people who have supposed empathy or emotion would consider it a weird request and yeah. kind of feel uncomfortable with doing something like that. But Yoon Jae, after going through all the social norms he can remember from his mom, concluded... Why not? (laughs) Well, to him, it's like a nice thing to do Mm -hmm. because the mother is dying and she wants to see the son. So in a logical sense, yeah. (laughs) So, uh, but this is, comes back to bite the father in the ass because Gon is so resentful of the father. I think partly because he was robbed of a chance to meet his mother. Mm -hmm. And it's something that eats, you know, eats away at him. And it probably causes a little bit of resentment even in his relationship with Yunjie. But I don't think that's as much of a factor. No, I think initially it causes him to pay attention to Yunjie. But Mm. quickly, once he realizes what Yunjie's nature is, he he, he's more just intrigued and then kind of builds a rapport with him. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting how their Yunjae and Gan are almost like complete opposites. Because mm. Gan is angry, resentful. He's had a hard life. He feels he, so much. He just really want his his fascination with Yunjae is because he would love not to feel. I think. Yeah. Well, and... he, I think he feels mostly sadness. Like everyone thinks he's just an angry kid. Mm. He's been marked as that by his father, his peers, and Yunjae is the only person really. To actually see past that, like when we're talking about the like barriers people put up, like people are also really quick to judge, mm. like people with supposed empathy. Whereas like Yoon Jae, he's not able to judge in a way. No, so he's able I mean, to see and Gon. he would be justified in judging Gon because yeah, it's not yeah. like Gon was kind to him no. at the start. So yeah. like, but it's really interesting. So Gon, this person who feels so much, is I think really envious of Yoon Jae. He feels so much pain. He just wishes he could be like Yoon Jae, for, like someone who doesn't feel anything. <laughs> like, but so. it's interesting because he tries yeah. to, um, at some point, coach Yoon Jae yeah. in, in, to, in terms of like increasing his emotional capacity. So yeah. I think I think Gon realizes that neither of them are in a good place. Yeah. And probably they both need to get to a happy medium. But, yeah, yeah, but, he, but he abandons that yeah. towards the end, which is what leads to the climax. I think he just loses mm. hope. Yeah. And just so comes to his. Well, he got framed. He got mm-hmm. framed in on a school trip. Yeah. And that was what was uh, tipped him over the edge. He lost all hope. He was just being portrayed as this angry kid who's gonna be a criminal one day. So he thought, you know what? I might as well be a criminal if everyone's just gonna think of me that way. Mm-hmm. So, but Yoon Jae, I think this was a thread that came up from. Like, Gon actually taunted him a lot about how he didn't do anything when his granny um, was, murdered. was murdered. And Yoon Jae, I think, part of this growth process. And there is a suggestion that maybe he's, through his exercising of his, like, you know, emotions, he's gaining empathy. Yeah, um, and especially, like, that's highlighted with his, like, interactions with Dora, who's yeah. a female student mm, in his school. That he it's clear friend, that yeah. he has an attraction towards her, mm. and he's curious about her, yeah. kind of, in his own way. And they kind of, 
yeah, through the eyes of his neighbor, Dr. Shin, you can see yeah. that his empathy and his capacity for emotion is growing throughout yeah. the book. Yeah. yeah. And Dr. Shin is convinced that he is uh, growing, like his amygdala is developing. Yeah. Um, I do appreciate that the book leaves it ambiguous. Um, cause sometimes with like, um, books where people are dealing with conditions or like disabilities, it seems like it's a way out or it cheapens like people who actually live with these things that Which it's like they become one in normal 10 people for this yeah. particular condition. So I like it that it's ambiguous. Like maybe he, like the suggestion that maybe he didn't develop, um, and is still able to live a life and thrive. Mm-hmm. I like that, where it's like, you know, it doesn't yeah. matter. Like he, there is no such thing as normal. There is a quote from the book that I really like. Being ordinary is the hardest thing to achieve. It's like, there's no such thing as ordinary. Everyone's playing, everyone's an actor. Yeah. So. I mean, we just play yeah. to what's expected of us yeah. most of the time. Societal expectations. Even the people who are doing unexpected stuff get yeah. put in that box of like, oh, that's the crazy person who does the, mm-hmm. like, like the crazy stuff. So they yeah. just keep fulfilling that role too. Exactly. So. Yeah, and then of course we get to our climax where Gon mm. and is rescued, kind of, <laughs> <laughs> sort of. Yunjae sacrifices himself in order to try rescue yeah. Gon, uh, which obviously from our perspective normally would mean like, you know, he's he values his friendship so much that he can make this ultimate sacrifice. From Yunjae's perspective, I guess, I don't know how much emotion ties into that versus just he he logically thinks this is what i should do because he's gone is his friend like i think he like in a way the logic almost like comes full circle into empathy yeah it's like he's my friend i gotta he has the framework of logic around emotion so it doesn't Mm. matter he just goes through the yes no yes yes no no and then he comes like you know one of those magazine things where it's like do you see this yes (laughs) do you like this no and then you follow it down to the answer he kind of does that type of exercise you can imagine him doing that type of exercise in his head before making any like decisions and this is this is where he lands so it's interesting that all the training and experience he's had around emotions, empathy and stuff leads him to the answer that we would consider the empathetic answer, yeah. right? Because he doesn't have other emotions like <laughs> muddying things. Most other people would have fear, fear and... just in the back of their head. So as they're going through that chart, like, oh, should I help? They were like, oh, no, but I might get beat up or I might like die mm-hmm. or Whereas something. Fear or, yeah, so he's oh, almost gosh. purely empathetic in that way, yeah yeah it's so interesting all right so we've kind of gone through the characters and the themes and dove in a little bit not um, necessarily in chronological order but <laughs> the guts of it are there so in terms of how the book reads now the book is short mm. it only takes a couple of hours so it's perfect if you just want to cuddle up for an afternoon and yeah. kind of read through a start to finish book um, it's also simple in the way that it's written. There's nothing truly complicated. The chapters, some are so short. It's like half a page sometimes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, this book will make you feel like you're like nailing it because mm-hmm. you're like, oh, great. Five chapters done already. Mm-hmm. Uh, it reads really well. I mean, considering a lot happens, but not a lot happens in this book mm-hmm. at the same time because a lot of it is just his daily life and stuff. It flows really well. You never... You never feel like you're kind of waiting for press mm. to pass you by or you're no. kind of, okay, let's get to the good bit. So in terms of like the entire thing, the whole thing is fascinating from start to finish. Yeah. And yeah, I didn't at any point feel like, oh, this chapter is kind of dragging a bit or I, I kind of... No. I well, there was a much chapter to drag. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, the pacing of the book yeah, the, was good. It was really quick. And the, yeah. the style of writing and the word choices... It is a translation from the original mm, Korean book, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, but I felt it was quite accessible to most people. I think it would make a really good book for like middle school or high school mm. students, just because the person in the book is a peer in terms yeah, of age. The themes. But I also think it's accessible in terms of the language and, the, yeah. and clear themes and stuff going on. Yeah, I agree. Mm. Nice. Brew yourself a cup of tea, sit down with the book. And yeah, I think... Um, what are overall conclusions, impressions? I think I think it's an interesting book. If you're interested in Korean culture, there's just a couple enough in there that you're that you're going to come away with mm-hmm. some points. Um, ultimately, I think the book itself 
could be set in any time mm. because yeah. there's not a lot of technology in the book so it's going to date really well i think yeah. i feel like it's one of those books because it's not tied to like the plot isn't tied to any like phone yeah. or whatever you get um yeah you get an age so i yeah. think it's a book that's going to it's just going to age really well and um, outside a lot of the uh, cultural stuff it also feels like it's not it is a Korean story, yeah. but it feels universal. It's just very human. Yeah, it's a human story. So. Even though the character yeah. might not be considered the most human of humans, in a way, he is perfectly human. And yeah. anyone reading the book is going to... Well, that's the emphasize. lesson, right? Like, there is no such thing as human. Yeah. Everyone is different. and Everyone's, everyone's experience yeah, is different. Everyone's trying to play a part in this world. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I honestly, despite the fact that a lot of like terrible things happen within the book... You never feel horrified because of the way mm. Yoon Jae narrates it. It's just very much like, oh, this is just what's happening. In another yeah. book, you might just feel very disturbed or... It gets dark. It gets, yeah, you just feel like, oh, this is a heavy book. But this book is written and narrated in such a way that even though it's he- like they're heavy topics, mm. it doesn't feel overwhelming at any point. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. It, yeah, it's like that paradox of it's dark but not dark. It's like... <laughs> very so empathetic but also so logical yeah like it, it's hitting both sides at the same time yeah it's, it's, mul- it's an interesting like, balance yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah but overall it makes for a i won't say a fun read mm. that's not quite the right word but it makes for a good read and i think yeah, yeah it's perfect for a sunday afternoon where you just want to cuddle up to a story yeah cozy up to a story yeah. cuddle i don't know what I mean by cuddle up. <laughs> Maybe with the pillow? I'm not sure. <laughs> but yeah, so that is our um, overview of almonds. Yeah. And um, if you're interested in joining us for the next K pop book club, we're going to be checking out Kim Ji Young, born 1982, which is a novel by Cho Nam Ju. Mm-hmm. And this is a book that a lot of K pop stars have mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen RM mention it from BTS, and I think Red Irene Velvet. in Red Velvet has mentioned it as well. So, yeah, that's the next one we're going to check out. So, the next book club will be on the first Wednesday of November. So, if you're interested, be sure to hit subscribe. And the notification bell so you know when we go well when the video drops we're not going live it'll be pre-recorded <laughs> and join us and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and if you have any book recommendations that you think Ooh. we might be interested in be sure to let us know yeah, in the comments let us know. let us know what you thought of almond if you read it and mm. yeah we'll see you again right <laughs> Bye.